Hello everyone, welcome to the Senior Assembly. <laughs> My name is Zoe Katsaros, I'm so excited to welcome you all here today. To the parents and guests, thank you so much for joining us today. We're so glad that you're here to celebrate this moment with us. And it's so hard to believe that we only have 11 days of school left for the seniors, but... <laughs> We're so excited to celebrate the culmination of all the years of hard work today in the college pending ceremony we have today. So before we begin all that, I'm going to um, invite Dr. Ranton up in just a minute, but I'm going to open us up in a word of prayer first. So dear Lord, thank you so much for this time that we get to spend together here to honor the seniors. And we thank you for the time that we've been given to spend here at King's. We pray that you will bless today's ceremony and bless the future endeavors of all the seniors as they move into the next season of life. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. So now I'm going to invite Dr. Ranton to come up. Well, I am so excited to celebrate our seniors today, but before we get started, I have to confess that we've been keeping a pretty big secret. And today is our day that we get to reveal that. So I am going to welcome up Mr. Parenti to share those details. All right. It's fun being on this side of the camera. Hi, Zane. Good to see you. Um, if you don't know, I teach film and television production here, but I oversee a couple of other classes and support sports broadcasting, social media marketing, and others, as well as journalism, our amazing yearbook staff. And about a week from today, you all will be gathered back here for the amazing uh, yearbook assembly, where you will get to walk away with your own yearbook, and we're so, so excited for you to do so, because as me and Mrs. Lockmiller have discussed, this is the best one to date, we believe. So I can't wait for you to get your hands on that book. And usually at that ceremony, we announce the person who the book is being dedicated to. Uh, the staff of the yearbook and Mrs. Lockmiller think and consider who is somebody on this campus, a faculty member or a staff member, you know, who has really kept Christ king, who has really loved with a lion-sized heart and who has contributed to the mission of the King's Academy for years and years now. And they have worked to discern who that individual is, and they will still be honored at that ceremony. But additionally, there is some, some secret news that I get to share with you all, that Mrs. Lockmiller's students actually secretly conspired with the King's Academy administrators and the publication company to dedicate the 2023-2024 yearbook to none other than Mrs. Lockmiller herself. So after years of recognizing others, we think that it's fitting that we turn the tables and spend this year recognizing you and dedicating this book to you. Um, <laughs> You know, we can talk about how exceptional these books truly are, and really they are world-class publications, but more important than that, I just want to share uh, that Mrs. Lockmiller's gospel-centered, Christ-like attitude day in and day out are, in my opinion, the most exemplary character traits that she shares here on campus. You know, yearbook staff knows that I come to the classroom once a week just to chat, and maybe half the time is talking about the yearbook, but the other half the time she is just gushing about her students and sharing prayer requests about you all. She prays for you so fervently in your salvation that you would come to know Christ in an intimate way on this campus. And I'm so, so fascinated by how well she has loved each of you and how she has prayed over you. We all have a wonderful mother here on campus who loves us so dearly. So thank you so much and we hope you're honored by this dedication.
And now we'll invite up Luke Ramos to uh, take it away. So Luke, come on down. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> I just want to take this chance to say I'm truly thankful for the senior class to uh, be giving me this opportunity to be the class president. Um, I would like to take a chance to give advice to the new student council and the new student council president. It is the student council's job to make sure each year is as fun as you can make it. It is because it goes by way faster than any of you guys can ever think. Um, even though these last three weeks have felt like an absolutely eternity for me. <laughs> so it is with my honor to welcome up the new student council president, Gabby Hernandez. <laughs> Wear it with pride. Wear it with pride. I'm sure you will do a great job. Um, with that, I just want to say thank you all so very much. My time here at King's Academy has been absolutely amazing. And that's thanks to every single one of my classmates and their parents. Thank you, guys. Okay. At this time, we would like to present the Vermont Award. William H. Vermont was the first headmaster of TKA and was known for his love and concern for the students. The William H. Vermont Award is presented to the King's Academy teacher or staff member who shows the same spirit. It is our privilege to present the William H. Vermont Award for the 2023-2024 school year to Mrs. Cressetti. Now join me in welcoming Mrs. Martin. Good afternoon. I have the honor of reading the senior time capsule this year. Uh, for those of you new to the school or parents who may not know what is about to happen, the time capsule tradition was started by Mrs. Stack many years ago, and usually the seventh grade class is handed a sheet of paper at the end of their seventh grade year with questions or categories on it relating to their time as a seventh grader. They are asked to fill it out, answer all the questions, sharing whatever information they would like to share. Now, it does say as a disclaimer that this may be read in their senior assembly. That's how it's normally done in seventh grade. However, this class of 2024 ended up filling these sheets out at the end of their ninth grade year due to some technical issues. When reading through these, because you all were older, I could see you definitely held back more than the normal unsuspecting seventh grader. <laughs> However, it is still my privilege to read them to you now. I will read you the topic being answered and then read the responses. What I like to do most is the first topic. Almost everyone said they like to hang out with friends, and it's those type of answers we got a lot of because they were older and they knew what was going to happen. However, Leo clarifies his answer and said, do dumb things with my friends. Alejandra Mejia drawing and added, that better not change, exclamation. 
Tano, Tan, sorry, Tanner David Barfield, baseball. Kylan, play soccer and mess around. <laughs> Bella Beato, enjoy time by myself. Michael Mahalko, work out and sing. <laughs> Cal Layden, his favorite thing to do was to stare at Michael. <laughs> oh yeah, you wrote it. <laughs> Emma said read, Melanie, she likes to read and write. Avery, run cross country track and play with my cutie. Cutie, I, that's all it was, just cutie stop. Layla, scrolling on TikTok and partying with my friends. Ava. Ava said dance and hanging out with my friends. Jonathan Jones and Abigail Burton both like the same thing, traveling. And now you both know just in case, I don't know, 10 years from now. Um, what? What? Sorry, I got confused. Um, Connor McKamey answers a question with a question, as we would expect. So, to the question, what I like to do most, he says, why are these questions so hard? <laughs> Number two, second topic. These people are the most important to me. And almost everyone put friends and family, which is, is great, but not Cal. <laughs> Cal said Michael Mahalko. Michael Mahalko, the motorcycle. And now I'm wondering if we have a stalker situation, but I, I don't know. Maybe you're just really great friends. <laughs> Lindsay and Katie both said their lunch table was important. Nicholas Ahern, Joseph, Matt, Noah, and Jacob. And Jacob Casada, he just put birds. <laughs> okay. Owen said friends and family, but also added my phone, my computer, and Xbox. Steven Studley, the boys. Oh. Is that on the table? It's on, okay. And Jonathan Jones. Jonathan Jones' most important person to him was himself. <laughs> and no one is surprised. <laughs> Number three, I'm good at. I'm good at. Julia Greenland said, giving advice. Brandon Williams, anything I want to be good at. <laughs> Valerie, doing my friend's hair and makeup. Alejandra Gonzalez, expressing my opinions. <laughs> Ethan Keane, thought he was good at golf. <laughs> Kaya said she was good at laughing at everything. Hannah Kate, making normal situations awkward. Luke Porche, school, kinda. Sports and some video games. Hadia, playing the bass. <laughs> Sophie Rodriguez says she's good at sports and keeping conversation. And isn't that the truth? It's like a one-way conversation. <laughs> and lastly, Jacob Casada says he's good at something we all might be good at. He writes, getting annoyed at Connor. <laughs> you know I'm loving it. All right, number four. What I value most. Almost everyone put again, my family and friends. Tatiana, loyalty and goodness. Gigi Cannon, integrity and kindness. Isabella Torres, mental health days. EJ said he values most is his life. Maddie Day, relationships. The people you spend your time with help shape who you are. <laughs> Nina, my cat's serious. And what Cal values most is? Michael. You guessed it, Michael. It's a strange, it was a strange paper. Five. I get angry about, Frank says, when Landon makes a joke. 
And that was surprising to me because I didn't know Landon could make jokes. John Harris gets mad about inconveniences. Colby being poked with pencils in English. Aubrielle and Valerie get mad about people taking their food. Reese, someone eating something that I have been saving. And Mackenzie Minier, Lola, Sophie, and Lucy all get angry about people who chew loud. And Victoria Backerms gets angry about Lucy Daly. <laughs> and then you put JK, liberals. <laughs> I know. Well, it's a good crowd, good crowd for that. Allison Monty said spreading false information. It was during COVID. Landon, oh, Landon says he gets angry about a lot of things. Oh, that could be a joke, maybe. Jeffrey Montgomery, Alejandra Gonzalez, Layla Robertson, Owen all got angry about the same thing. Mr. Mastin's biology class. Joseph Slay and Daniel Johnson both said losing. Justin Jobson, all the schoolwork we gotta do. Jesse, excess schoolwork. And Kendall agrees with that and also says, studying things that my teacher tells me to and then the test being totally different. And Alex Spector gets angry about fake people, liars, and stupid people. And we all know she said it just like that. Clinton, things that are unfair, Lily politics, Haley people being rude, Tyler Hodges gets angry about things that make him angry, Natalie, my grades and FOMO, Maddie Bajan, slow walkers, and people in general. <laughs> Kyla Ann gets angry about Mr. Schnack taking dancers out of shows. <laughs> Senin, when I get an 89% on an assignment, Dan Darling, when someone brings up my old haircut. <laughs> Hannah Chipo oh, sorry, Hannah Kate gets angry about Ainsley saying Ch Chipotle wrong. And then Ainsley had recently learned how to say Chipotle and then spelled it wrong. <clears throat> Under recently I've learned, that's the next category, Nicholas McGinty said that the academic part of school is boring. Jonathan Jones learned that it's best to stay quiet about winning because nobody wants you to win. <laughs> Poor Jonathan. Macy Crota learned that chocolate milk did not come from chocolate cows. Nicholas Castro, that no one really knows anything. Marlowe, that having friends makes high school 10 times better. James Martin, how to find tangent circles. Kristen J. To not care about anyone, what anyone thinks about you, people don't always mean what they say, so forgive them. Trinity, that it's easy to forgive, but hard to ask for forgiveness. Josie, no one cares how you look at school. Christina Polidori, that if I try my best, I can get good grades. Kinsley, Getting a 97 on a geometry test was a one-time thing. Chase Ritter, just because someone said something correct doesn't mean that you shouldn't trust them for advice. Leo, don't trust women. <laughs> That's a young age. Victoria Backerms learned, the more you know, the less likely you are to be a liberal. Kylan Stefano, life isn't real. Love's make-believe. I'm sure it was before Maddie. Check that they are still together the day before. Okay, yep, yeah, I did, don't worry. Oh, Connor. Connor learned that you shouldn't show immense emotions of love toward Jacob Casada. There's something about this group. And lastly, Jacob Casada learned that Connor McCamey is not funny at all. 
Ten years from now, I hope to, Natalia says, have found my passion and to live in a better world. Ryan Mandor hopes to be smart. Matt hopes to be alive. Frank hopes to be 25. <laughs> and Brandon Palmer hopes to graduate and have a girlfriend. Good luck. <laughs> Listen, I had them in class, don't feel bad. <clears throat> Alex Spector hopes to be a reality TV star like on The Real Housewives of New York City. <laughs> And I don't think that's a joke. <laughs> you wrote it. What do you remember from this year that sticks out? So what did they remember from their ninth, year that, ninth grade year that sticks out? Most everyone put the pandemic, masks, quarantine, etc. cetera. Devereaux and Lana put the removal of masks. That was a big deal. James Garlick says it went by fast. Jonathan Jones, I win, you win. Bruna, prom, which I thought was a nice flex, ninth grader to prom. Paracela said her birthday party. Bethany said, I went to an actual party. Peyton, oh, Peyton said it was the second time I took algebra and Spanish won. Sorry, Peyton. Kinsley, what stuck out to her was Lindsay getting a 17 on the geometry test. It's okay, though. She got a 49 with test corrections. <laughs> Tyler Hayes, too many people getting gassed with Axe spray in the locker room. Talia, when I fell up the stairs and my skirt flew up. Connor McCamey, sk skipping class to go try on things from the lost and found. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Brandon Williams, the water gun fight. That can't be good. Daniel Johnson, EJ, not being able to score any points in our JV basketball season. Gabriel, health class was a lot funnier than I expected. Joyce, I never knew I could laugh in a math class until I joined Mrs. Martin's seventh period, and that's probably why I'm not teaching anymore. <laughs> but this next one makes me feel better because Maddie Bajan said what sticks out to her, her ninth grade year, was Mr. McCormick's birthday bash. <laughs> 10, the 10th uh, topic. The best thing about being a ninth grader, Justin Wright says it's easy get to get good grades. Victoria Backham's not worrying about taxes. <laughs> and then for the sake of time, I'm just gonna group a bunch of things together here and just make a list to take you down memory lane. This is what your class said, the best thing about being ninth graders was. Getting out of middle school, not as much pressure, not too much responsibility, more freedom, more opportunity, low expectations, less work, friends and the stupid stuff they did having great teachers, upperclassmen advice, the future, having lunch at the perfect time, homecoming week soccer team, getting on varsity teams, Mrs. Mesa, no ACTs, only three years of high school left, you're probably not burnt out yet, learning to drive, study hall film, engineering with Mr. Headley, lunch table gossip about ex-boyfriends. <laughs> and lastly, some special memories. So without naming who said these, I'm just gonna make a list. Here we go. Mrs. P and Mrs. Volrath made every day so fun. Lunch tables, jazz performance in the courtyard, sideline cheer, playing volleyball in Mr. Mastin's class. Mrs. Maples dropping the turtle. Seventh grade boys PE class and playing World Cup. Going to the Holy Land in sixth grade, Philly trip, weight training with Coach Letty. Daniel kicking a banana at lunch and it getting stuck on the ceiling. <laughs> Helena Hoitz Quinciera, Frank ripping his pants. The theater shows, Disney trips, football team, golf team, choir class, and the guy who had the gun at the fair. That's what you all put, it was, that's you. All right, I have five special memories that I'm gonna be a little more specific and this is how we will end it. The first one is from Ethan Keene. I made a really good friend named Sophie Rodriguez. And she's been a great friend. 
and never made fun of me when I messed up at anything. And I thought that was so sweet. But now you can kind of understand Ethan's statement when you read EJ's special memory, which was, when Ethan King failed the 225 back squat. <laughs> Poor Ethan. Marin Zakowski's special memory was, when Michael and Mahalko and I won the most adorable couple in the sixth grade. <laughs> the photographers wanted him to propose to me for the picture, but he refused because he didn't want to get married in sixth grade. And I just have one question, was Stalker Cal there? <laughs> he probably were. Brandon Palmer's special memory was, in seventh grade, when Caden tried to fist fight me in the bathroom while Connor was sitting on top of the stall. <laughs> and Mr. Huther caught us. This was the first time I almost got suspended. That's the special memory. And lastly, Carlos said his special memory was when Brandon put a worm in Ava's drink and did get suspended. And that's it. Thank you very much. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. When the road looks rough ahead and you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed, you just remember what your old past said. Boy, you got a friend in me. Yeah, you got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me You got trouble And I got them too There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you We stick together See it through Cause you got a friend in me You got a friend in me now Some other folks might be a little bit smarter than I am Getting stronger too, maybe, but none of them will ever love you the way I do. It's me and you, boy, and as the years go by, a friendship will never die. You're gonna see it's our destiny. You got a friend in me. Shadows disappeared, the animals inside came out to play. When face to face with all our fears, learned our lessons through the tears, made memories we knew would never fade. One day my father, he told me, son, don't let it slip away. He took me in his arms, I heard him say, when you get older, your wild heart will live for younger days. Think of me if ever you're afraid. He said one day. Told me. 
fire they can't put out Carve your name into those shining stars He said go venture far beyond the shores Don't forsake this life of yours I'll guide you home no matter where you are One day my father, he told me Son, don't let it slip away When I was just a kid, I heard him say When you get older, you wild heart will live for younger days Think of me if ever you're afraid He said one day We want to give a special shout out to Mr. Parenti for helping Ms. Kolar put together our senior slideshow and Ms. Martin with the time capsule. Each senior will be receiving the link with today's picture slideshow. Now, please help me in welcoming Ms. Herrera for the college pinning ceremony. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm here to just congratulate the class of 2024 for all of their college acceptances this year. Let's give them a big round of applause. So there's no doubt that this class has yielded some pretty tremendous results. So today we will honor them during our college pinning ceremony. It's a true joy to celebrate their accomplishments as they set out to be Christian leaders impacting the world for the King of Kings. 
National Signing Day is quickly approaching, and while most of our seniors have decided where they're attending college, there are a few that are still deciding. And so at this time, we want to honor seniors who are still prayerfully considering their options and allowing God to lead them in their decision to carry out His will over their lives. For our seniors that are still deciding, please stand to be recognized for creating strong college acceptances and that still require continued prayer. So if you're still deciding, go ahead and stand. All right. And there are many of you that have already decided, and so we're excited to celebrate all of you. So now let's continue to celebrate our seniors. I'd like for the seniors attending the University of South Florida to please come down and pin your names. Let's give them a big round of applause. And then all the future knights attending the University of Central Florida, please come down at this point. All right, let's welcome seniors that are attending the University of Florida down to this floor. And those students attending Florida State University, please come down. Students who have enrolled at FAU, please come down to the floor to be celebrated. And those students that will be attending the University of Miami, you are now welcomed to come on down. All right, for our senior students that are attending a Christian school, including but not limited to Palm Beach Atlantic, Liberty, Sanford, Baylor, come on down. And we'll welcome down students attending any other uh, college in the state of Florida. <laughs> FIU, FGCU, University of Tampa.
And at this time, we'll welcome down the group of students that plans to attend an out-of-state college or university, or out-of-country college or university, or has other post-secondary plans. Please come on down. So as our last seniors pin their name, let's give them one more round of applause. It's really been a lot of fun working with you guys. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome one of our senior prefects, Dev Hoxie, to the stage to close our event in prayer. Hi everyone, if you could just please bow your heads and close your eyes, I'm gonna close us out in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you today with hearts of gratitude and appreciation, Lord. Thank you for giving us the ability to come to you in prayer, Lord. It is a blessing we so often overlook. Lord, thank you for allow allowing us to gather here today to celebrate and recognize the achievements of our senior class of 2024. We pray over the protection of this class as they go out into the real world for the first time. I pray that you may be with each individual, give them the strength and courage to remain strong in the relationship with you, even when they might be tested by those who are of the world. I pray that you may use our class to serve you and disciple your word and truth to those who otherwise would not have known it. Lord, I pray for the parents and guardians of each of these seniors, that you may give them the strength they need to support their son or daughter leaving home. Give them peace and remind them that you will always be, you will always be with their child. Finally, Lord, I pray over the class of 2025, the upcoming seniors. Give them the strength to finish their last year of, school, of high school strong. Lord, remind them that in the tough times and in the busy seasons that you are with them. I pray that they trust you through their application process. Thank you for this community, Lord. We pray all this in your mighty and heavenly name, amen.
Can you hear me? 